want us, they want our business so much, they went and got Dapper Dan to become a designing consultant. And still, they coming with the, 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 the monkey shit. Still, they coming with the disrespect. Listen, man, I don't know how many of y'all know this. Our consumer base is the strongest and the largest consumer base in the world. $1.25 trillion. $1.25 trillion. On this episode, we're talking black culture versus the fashion industry. So pull up to the table. Hello, everyone. Hello. We are here again today at another episode of the Situation Ship Circle. I want to welcome you guys to the table with me. I feel the energy. <laughs> so today at the table, we have... Afini. Alan. Devana. Zay. Micah. Yes, girl, this is a nice time. <laughs> <laughs> I see you guys are all dressed so amazing. And that's so interesting because today we are going to be going in a little bit of fashion. Yes, right? Fashion. Who doesn't love a good bit of fashion? <laughs> right. So, today we, I really want to lead off with, um, we all aspire to have these brand labels. But are these brand labels missing the mark as it pertains to our culture? Well, they're hitting their mark. Oh, oh, oh okay. Go with that. You uh, go. <laughs> you go forth. When it comes to these people, they know exactly what the hell they're doing. Yeah. Like, oh, it started by Talk about action. it. It might have started like, oh, I didn't know at the time, like maybe a year and a half ago. But at this point, we know what age we're living in. We're living yeah. in the information age. We know how to make a one-to-one -one connection in two seconds, and Twitter will dox you in 2.5. Well, some so. would say the people are being very, very sensitive. A new stuff? Well, since SO is passing through, how many people can? That's right? a thing. That's Thank a, you. That's I feel like time. it was never the big brands were never created for black people to wear Correct. until like Correct. we like took it back and made it culture with like mm -hmm. uh like Cameron and Dips like like everybody rappers started wearing the bigger brands so everybody in the hood started wanting the bigger brands mm -hmm. first of all second of all when you say it's going through this huge company just like every time we see the picture this huge company <laughs> nobody thought that this was problematic because nobody in that office is a minority a marginalized group or nothing also, so all not even American. So yeah, so all the twelve white people in di um, deciding on the design, they're like, yeah, because yeah. they don't give a fuck. It doesn't this, affect them. This is not even American. I mean, that's a great point. So you're if you're not American, you're not fully understanding of American history. Yeah, what does that matter? And to I you? do believe there's a difference everywhere. between I coolest monkey in the jungle and then like Gucci putting the black lip, like, like coolest monkey in the jungle and putting it on a child. It's like okay, and children, oh, like so. And then his the mom, mom was okay with it. She didn't see that it was an issue. She because was she's like, from another, she's from a whole other place. Yeah. Well, let's back yeah, up for a second. Let's back, let's back up for a second. Because some would say the black face thing wouldn't necessarily apply to you, color light skin. Mm -hmm. And I understand that I have colorism um, privilege. Okay. I have to deal with that because when I was in high school, like... Yeah, the black kids treated me like half black and a whole other race, but I mean that was still my people. I was raised with the with the dark skins, and when I hung with the white people, guess what they called me? Black. So it doesn't really right. change. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't no winning. Ain't no winning. Ain't no winning. My sister and my mama are okay. all brown skin. So, yeah. so when when these designers make these mistakes, like what what are they doing? Are they doing because we're ignorant? I don't have nothing. Okay. Because because wait, 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 no, I'm at the table. <laughs> when it comes to all these boycotts, the only person and I, my heart is um, pulling on this is Louis Vuitton. That's the only like big brand that I have. So if they act up, then I got bags to sell. But when it comes to <laughs> Gucci and Prada and all of them, I don't have none of that. And so you were never, and that's the big thing with boycotting. Boycotting is when you no longer spend your money with the company. If you never had it in the first place, it's the easiest boycott for you because you ain't buying that shit to begin with. Right. So they're not worried about you. And then people who are burning things that they already paid for, that company has already profited from it. So why would you destroy your property as a boycott? Right. Yeah. They're doing this. They're, uh, it, one more thing. Going yeah. back to what Zay's saying, they do, they purposely do this. They are very, people are very intelligent and there's when there's money on the line, people are going to make sure that they've done their research, they've invested time and money in this, so they know that this is going to cause a huge stir. 
So the people, for example, with the what, what was that? Was that Gucci? Yeah, yeah. it was Gucci with so the black, like with the. So <laughs> how many more people saw that that Gucci line than if they hadn't put that out? Mm-hmm. Maybe four or five m- times more people saw that. Mm-hmm. Now people are looking. I'm sure they went to the Gucci website. They looked more into Gucci. Right, yeah, exactly, and so alive. press is all press in that sense for them <laughs> is good press. They yeah. did that very they, purposely. They probably never planned on selling that particular item, but guess what? They got more views to the website, exactly. and it's a lot easier when you're pissing off a demographic that you never meant to sell to in the first That's place. True. And it's even so, worse because with black people, I feel like we don't stick to things. We will stick it out for only a couple weeks, and then next thing you know, there's something big coming out right? next year, and you're back to yeah. rocking. And so, you yeah. so that brings you to the issue of what happened between. Mr. T.I. and Floyd Mayweather. That was personal. So, yeah, so they, they, say, they yeah, say it was personal, yeah. but if you go, like, if you go back and, and look Boy, at all the details, T.I. is pretty much saying, you know, like, he can buy what he wants to buy with his money, but Floyd Mayweather was saying, you black people don't stick together, so why should I stop buying it if y'all, next week, y'all gonna go buy it anyway? Because well, it's the coon that don't stick together. Oh! Well, no, I, I cannot, can I come from the outside on that one? I mean, first of all, his money trumps T.I.'s money astronomically. That's one. That's one. And if it, there is a coon that ain't gonna stick with the other coon, it's that rich coon, typically. I mean, so let's address it that way. And two, like he said, when you want to talk about, when you want to talk about this one incident, you said three months. What the? Does it matter that you're gonna boycott this hundred billion dollar company that's been here for over forty years for three months because you a nigga, because you black, because you a hood rich king? What does it matter? If you're going to do it, do it as an entirety, then get us to band together, and then my rich ass going to knock you on the head and say, you, you're right. We ain't doing none of it. You get no more than a million. But instead, for the three months, screw it. I'm going there right now. I got a question. Does that mean we can't buy knockoffs either? Absolutely, buy your knockoff. Buy your knockoff. Because if you couldn't afford it in the first place, like you just. Right. <laughs> but, but if we're buying knockoff, is that not supporting a brand? No. 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 The money goes right. to the, 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 the Japanese. It's the image. It's, it's the image. It's, 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 it's the key. Like, oh, is that a real Gucci bag? Let me go to that website yeah, because your rocket is still their brand, and somebody's gonna think it's real and go to their website. That's still free publicity for them. It depends on the person who's carrying it. It's not like. I just go like, oh, my name real no way. Alright! Yeah. Yeah. Chinatown 599! Yeah. And it's like, if you know that the person that's wearing it all of a sudden they have a Gucci bag and they never wore nothing else that's like popping or on brand, you're like, oh, so all of a sudden you have a $5,000 bag? Yeah, they just came back. The girl's about to get yeah, up. So it's like, yeah, mm, I wouldn't believe it in person. <laughs> I just wanted to quickly touch on cancel culture because cancel culture is not real and like boycotting and things like that are not real so these corporate companies and like these big organizations they do understand that now you can profit off of cancel culture and that you can um, when as soon as you get like black Twitter riled up about something black Twitter is like the hub or like black people really are the hub of anything culture and once we get into anything and start like making comments we bring everybody else who couldn't give a fuck to begin with and now all these people know about this because we've made such a big stir um, about something that doesn't even like benefit us in any way because boycotting these these organizations or these brands that you couldn't afford in the first place mm-hmm. that are not meant for you that never make space for you that to me just kind of seems natural I, I don't have Gucci money I don't have Prada money and even when I do have that money they're not the places that I'm gonna go spend it at because they're, they were never meant for me but the companies understand that once we start talking about canceling and boycotting they know that a lot more attention is gonna be on their brand they know that there's gonna be they're gonna be in the news so it's free publicity and it's another marketing scheme and they I know how to use those like, very well and yeah then on we top have of to that like, oh, yeah. like oh we have offended the black people so then these other people are like oh yeah let's yeah go we want to buy it some more like you know <laughs> Whatever. And it's different. It's, a, it's even different else. because even look at who's talking about it. Ti, look at Ti's followers on just the social black perspective. What does he represent as the black guy from the hood? Then you look at Floyd Mayweather. You got two of the big coons, in my opinion. One is a rapper, the other one is a boxer. How you get to be a boxer? How you get to be a rapper like that? You done cooned out a lot of them, selling dope and everything else. So you get two of the biggest coons and jump around on that coon platform and talk to the rest of the coons. Hey, don't buy it. Don't buy it. And what do we do? Cool now. Oh. <laughs> so now that we got the cool, my God. <laughs> so, so like, how do you think we as a culture or as a people can, can kind of combat this issue? Um, love. Okay. I, this issue really made me laugh. I think it's, it's ironic and it's also sad that something like this had to happen before we, you know, started 
realizing that they didn't want us in their clothes in the first place. Um, That's the real. And they said it. I think, and, and they said it. I, I think you know, an argument could be made that you know I'm gonna go back, but desegregation was bad for black people mm -hmm. because it took the focus away from yeah. supporting your own mm -hmm. and supporting other people's. A lot of people's idea of being fashionable is having a bunch of brands, not necessarily you know your ability to coordinate or anything like that. So I think we need to <laughs> talk about it, talk about it. I think, I, think, I think we need to stop thinking about getting ahead as how many name brands you have, yep. what Absolutely. car you're driving. Especially why Nigeria, I have to go back there. There are a lot of musicians in Nigeria, they brag about driving Bentleys and, and Rolls Royces, but the roads in Nigeria aren't paved. <laughs> you just can your road. Right? <laughs> no, but that's real. Yeah, exactly. That's, what, that's, what I'm that's crazy. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's, like, it's like black people bragging about going to Harvard when Harvard doesn't want you there. Mm. You should be funneling your money towards you know, Howard. But that's the same Harvard. thing with like the baby. Like there's memes about baby showers and Burberry. It's like, so who, how are we gonna know who the father is at the baby shower? Because <laughs> people in the hood always wear like Burberry uh, button downs to the. Baby shower. Oh, okay. All right. I didn't know that. <laughs> you mentioned not engaging in things because they don't want us there, i.e., their schools, potentially their clothes, their places. But would it not be a greater, and, and I completely agree with the idea of, of desegregation having hindered us, you know, in our propelling forward of our culture. But we have come so far now to where if we were to try to retaliate off of that, we, are, we, we, are, we, we don't have the weaponry. We don't have the resources to where we can actually fight back and make it to, to, to they, where they are. So I That's feel like the, the question, biggest, so though. I feel Do like the big, so, oh, so, so I feel like the biggest retaliation to that is to run up in Harvard, to run up, yeah, That's I'm in real. here, and then I'm gonna take over when I'm in here, and I'm gonna bring all my people with me when I get here. Kanye West. But how many people are coming in West? Kanye West. Kanye West. Kanye West. Okay. Kanye West. So he wants to respond. So I think, I think part of that is, we, we're not aware of the weaponry we have, right? Okay. Let's so, I do believe we do. Exa example, in Nigeria, um, there are car manufacturers in Nigeria. There's no Nigerian car company, but there are people in Nigeria who make cars. But these celebrities, these politicians, they'll never drive those cars because they're seen as inferior. They're seen as a fubu, mm -hmm. right? So until we start re redefining yeah, what we consider luxury, redefining what we consider quality, and not just lumping things that we make into the bucket of, oh, it's inferior because it's not Gucci and Rolls Royce and all that stuff. We won't move forward. I would agree with that. And I think that then those things have to be more marketed. Then mm -hmm. those things have to be, um, like you said, from the people that we are drawing those perspectives and those ideas from, the, the, the uh, ballers, mm -hmm. the rappers, all of that, they have to be the ones to start leading us in that direction. But I do think that when we are looking at what has already taken charge, mm -hmm the white culture that's already taken charge so why would we not try to go in in the same way they came and inhabited our space and took over why would we not try to go but, inhabit their space but we and can't take over? we can't just be reactionary right oh, of like, not. That, and, and that's the point of i'm trying not. to make as opposed to ti saying of we're going to boycott not. for three months ti needs to start promoting black brands yeah. so they can get, yeah, to, that's the, yeah. they can get to the point of com competing with gucci because think about it from the perspective of white people oh we're gonna piss black yeah. black twitter off today yeah. and for me and fame are pretty much the same but, shit. Oh, yeah. 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 But, but here's the thing though and i'm gonna and i feel i feel slightly guilty about doing this what i'm doing anyway i love black people Black people make beautiful things and have great things, but black people, it seems to me, have some shitty business sense in, in so many ways. From you supposed to open at nine, but you open at nine fifteen because you were up late, or you don't know how to do customer service, or like you know, I'm not talking, I'm not even talking about quality because black people, yes, we can do quality, but it's like they don't know how to act. I but think I know, wait, hold on, I think I know what you're trying to say. I, 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 I want to touch on that real quick, hold on, wait, first four of those. I feel like I know where you're trying to go with that, because in a lot of the situations with black people, it's not that we're not smart, sorry, this is my, 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 my but, um, She's like, don't fall, don't fall. With black people, a lot of it isn't so much that we're not smart business minded, it's that we, because we see another black person attached, we try to take something away from it. I.e., we show up and it's like, oh, that's my homie, they black. Nah. So instead of paying for it, guess what I'm gonna do? This I'm gonna get in free. See, I'm not I'm saying that that doesn't happen. Yeah. I agree with you. But at the same time, there is also 
a level coming from black people where I feel like they half-ass yes. things sometimes. Yes, ma'am. Yes. 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 That's what that means. And that's, that means. And that's, and that's my story. Because right. 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 I want to support the black businesses, yep. but there are so many times and when you watch the ball drop. I mean, right. Right. what he said. He said, he said the education. I went to an HBCU. I'm a graduate of Shaw University, class of 06. You know. But <laughs> Shaw University... <laughs> The presidents and those in charge of the funding have stolen from that school more than they've stolen from Harvard, more than they've stolen from other high, you know, PWIs. I went to the HBCU. My brother chose opted. I said I wasn't doing that because y'all don't run the world. So I'm not going to get myself into that, that gamut. So wh where does that fall for us? We, who, those who do, I gave my money. Then the people who's in control stole from us, but they didn't do it over there at the PWI. So why would I want my child to go to an all-black HBCU now? You're right. Yes. Let's go to the street. Yeah, I just want to wait for something. You know, <laughs> to show each other. Um, so I want to touch on a couple of things because I do agree with, for the most part with what the both of you are saying. So I do think that um, the issue a lot of times with black people is that we, and this is mostly due to integration, like we equ equivalent or you know the word that I'm looking for. Equate. 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 That is the word I'm looking for. We equate success is as integrated into white society mm. and not our standards so we look at it like this is why gucci and all those brands are like so big for us because we look at it as soon as if we're successful because we are we are wearing white brands or we're in white spaces and that is what makes us successful and so we don't feel like our stuff is enough the rule for most of us is that once we become adjacent to white society that is what makes us like better um you know, much more fulfilled, successful, and that's where the issue is. I feel like we have to get to a place where we feel as though our stuff is enough, our clothing is enough, and that our spaces, I think that that's a great strategy, though, Devon, like to go into white spaces and bring your people, and then, of course- But you also gotta bring stuff out of those places. Well, yeah. And that's yeah. not- And let's jump over one second. I feel like we put <laughs> way too much emphasis on, um, on branding, establishing um, us as like a status in an essence because as a people well like okay say for example in the hood people coming from nothing and as soon as you get a taste of like the limelight now you feel validated by like what you wear so um, like I've literally worked at a store where people would get off the public transit to wait in line for two hundred dollar mm -hmm. shoes, mm -hmm. and it's kind of like yeah. you where your priorities are exactly you know Stop validating what you wear, and in essence, you know, to to like feel rich or whatever. Right. Like to me, I feel like I can wear a piece of cloth and easily rock that shit better than somebody wearing like a five hundred dollar outfit. So, but the other side of that is also so when people are um, choosing these status symbols. They're not going into white communities with a new kids. They're going into black communities with them Thank so you. that they can compare themselves to someone else. And to me, it's the crab in a barrel mentality. Yes. So I yes. think there are some people who go to Ivy League schools and then act like they are better than the ones who didn't. Mm -hmm. There are some people who drive those nice cars and, and nice brands and then go back home and say, oh, well, look what I have on and look what you got on. So to me, it's like, well, if we really valued each other. We would want to invest in our communities. Yeah. And I get it. We don't get everything right for a whole lot of reasons. Right. But if we could do like Jewish folks do, yes. like Asians do, if we just came back to us no matter what, no mm -hmm. matter what, be committed to us, mm -hmm. if we could do something collectively, we could make a lot of impact, but we just can't do it. Because I see all the time in the fact, we're going back to the fashion industry where it's like, you know, a lot of um, high end models that I work with. They don't want to, you know, a new black woman has this brand and they don't want to model for her. They're like, oh, well, I don't know what that is. I'm not, I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. But yet they are gung ho. They are just waiting for another white brand, high end white mm -hmm. brand in New York to call them and they'll fly out there in heartbeat, but they won't model for, you know, right. the woman that who is trying to start something right. here in Charlotte. Mm -hmm. And I think that is sad. And I think mm -hmm. as collectively, you're right. We all know that how many times have it been said, like we as black people need to take it back to the black community, but we're not consistent mm -hmm. with that. And it's like we're afraid. It's mm -hmm. almost like we are afraid of failure when it comes to bringing it back um, to our community. That, though. Oh. We're broken with that situation, yeah, I feel like when it comes to black people, it's we create success around what we don't have and want to get. Mm -hmm. And then two, like because of that whole situation, we don't it, we don't value what we already have to mm -hmm. sell it off to each other. So it's like, okay, I already have something, but on the larger scale, quote unquote, 
Louis Armani, blah, 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 everything everybody else has heard of that I don't have is what's considered success. Right. And they don't look to, and that's what creates that situation that you were talking about, about us, especially in Charlotte, we don't mess with other people around us because they're not popping yet because they don't have mm -hmm. that face And that's why to black give. people, we need to be brave enough to say, hey, you know, I'm going to, yeah, of course I'll model for you. You're new, you know, let's bring attention here. Bra be brave enough to try and, you know, invest in each other. And black people are just not consistent enough. Because so we set the standard in the first place. And Amy, what you brought up, I mean, we're ethnicities and you know groups of people that did not break down to the assimilation i mean they didn't break down to losing their identification so they could fit in they stood true to who they were very much to the point of you're going to accept me as i am and then we are still going to push our culture forward we did not do that so I, got, I got a question i got a question about all of that so do we feel like if we get more people of color hired into these establishments, do we feel like that will change these no. establishments? No, no. that ain't no. the answer. No. You gotta, no. there's a, there's a, people she said color. that black people are broken in the head. <coughs> yeah. And I was gonna say the same thing. There, it's not just a, it's not just a black people thing, but it's something that we see in our communities and it's called the poverty mentality from the bottom up. There are people who are so used to being in poverty that they don't know any different way to think. And there's, there until they become not even just aware, but, educated on how to do things, how to think differently because it is how they think, right. yeah, it is how absolutely. they think right. that is keeping them down until we can help them to see a different way. That's why people get exhausted mm -hmm. trying to go into black communities and help them because they're stuck in a mindset. Right. So, so my next question is, do we knock the people who are working there? So no, do we, are we, no. Are we not? check is a check. I think we've all realized that a mm -hmm. check is a check. And, and to break into those places is still a massive yeah. achievement. Yeah, absolutely. Look, look at Virgil. Virgil. Oh, Virgil was Kanye's creative director at Nike. They didn't like Kanye's attitude. They got him out of there. They kept Virgil. What did Virgil become? The first ever in history to the oldest fashion house known to man. The, the, the head of men's fashion as an African-American male. He was an engineer. Virgil was highly educated. Virgil didn't come into this in the fashion. He was self-taught. He got with the right people. They made a goal, and they said, "You know what? They're gonna kill you, Kanye. So you gotta get out of the way. You're too obnoxious." Let little you saw what they did on the, on the runway. They cried. Them two yeah. brothers hugged, kissed, yeah. and cried because they know that it was changing the culture. Mm -hmm. And it's also about being true to who you are. Let those people, they say if there's one black person with a hundred other people on their team, but if they're being true to who they are, they represent something and they're breaking a mold. But if they're just going to assimilate, mm. what is the point? Mm. Exactly. Because I think they do get up to a certain level and I see a lot of designers, especially black designers, and they conform to, they get so much, many praises from these white people around them and then they conform to it's that. Easy. They're like, you know what, this is better. It fosters a confusion. It fosters a confusion. I don't, I, I, I don't know if it's more so that we're broken because I don't think that we are broken. We are too, our roots are too deep. We're too strong to be broken. But I just think there's a huge confusion, a huge divide. And these designers, they know that. Yeah. They exploit that. Yeah. They take advantage of that. Statistics are there. Yeah, I want to speak to us being broken because I don't think being broken is a bad thing. And I think that a lot of times we, um, we attach like negative things to certain words and I don't think necessarily being broken means that that's a bad thing but we have to understand that our psychology and our history as well because white supremacy has done a number on us and because we have such a big variety of people they've been able to use colorism hair texture the way you speak the way you dress Religion. so many different mm -hmm. things in order to be divisive to and we have internalized those mentalities and so we are divisive and a lot of times we like get into spaces where there are a lot of us who understand that there is something in the black community that we need to work on and so we understand that but the average like everyday black person also thinks they're not broken, also thinks there's nothing wrong with the community, also thinks we're fine. And well, the reality there was, is like I didn't say there was nothing wrong. Well yeah, but I just I just don't think being broken is a bad thing because I feel like we have to acknowledge the reality of our history and the reality of how we have been mentally like messed with. Because we don't see ourselves as whole people. We don't see ourselves as the same as white people. I mean, we do not we're not the same. things that are broken are hard to use. But mm. you can fix it. I, I think the they word can broken be. is. It can be fixed. I mean, that's what they're saying. How do you get a better word? How do you get a better word? Like, yeah, but hard. there's a difference between broken and damaged. Yeah. Yeah, broken, I don't think we're damaged. Yeah. I just think we're like, I just think we're. We're right now we are in pieces and we have to like get those pieces back together. And I do feel like it's semantic. Some people are gonna say broken is a bad word, but 
I mean, I get it because it's an emotional thing and it's going to take you to an emotional place, but if you just take it to psychology and things like that, before you can actually fix something, you have to admit that we are not the strong people. We are resilient people, but I don't know if that's strength. I feel well, like it's resilient. Even the person who makes it to these um, designer companies and work there, they I think it's a it's a... It's a lot to ask them to all of oh, a sudden yeah. just carry the flag. Yeah. And because yeah. people, yeah. Are gonna people, be no. people will be gunning for them. <laughs> if they so see that though. they have a black agenda, they're not going to be working there for very long. They're not. So it's kind of like, I don't think the answer is us having more people get into these designer spaces. I think it's us deciding intentionally that, look, we're not going to put value on those companies. Let's put value on ours, mm -hmm. but yeah. it is a mentality. It's a way of thinking, and we have to convince each other that this is the way to go so that everybody can do better. Mm -hmm. Designers and our young kids and yes. everybody can do better. But they, we do can also, their, they can get into these companies and then create their own space but for we do uh, also like you can to, use them. We do also have to acknowledge that there, when you talk about education, there are certain accesses to things that we don't have and yep. they do. Right. So in some cases, you do need that person to get in there and get on that level able to be able to send information back that we just naturally, we, I mean, and I say naturally, but due to, the, yeah, but they have to get back. back to what he was saying about that Kanye Virgil thing. You need yeah. both sides. You need both sides. Yeah. Because you need somebody, I hate to look at it from this mind frame, but you need somebody to infiltrate and you yes. need somebody to create a base. That's right. yeah. Because if you're going to tear down the institution that's hurting you, you need somebody to go in there and break it down from the inside as well as have a place for them to come and back to. And it may to look like company. they're not doing anything, but, but the fact that they're attaining that information and they may have kids that are able to attain that information and ultimately it does get passed around, that matters. So how do we all get on the same page? If that's then? exactly so, it. I, so I, think, I, think, I think one of the things that we fail to do is I think sometimes we push our intellectuals towards white society. Mm -hmm. We don't yes. embrace that. I agree. We ostracize I agree. them, right? Yes. And yes. then they end up identifying with white society yep. more than that. They're, they're oh, yeah. 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 And then we, you know, we scold them for ten years down the line. Mm -hmm. They don't give a fuck about black people. Well, I mean, we, they weren't embraced. But speak right. to that a little bit as trauma. a parent. I mean, as a parent of a child that is CMS Charlotte Mecklenburg School System. Certified gifted, meaning he tests 47 percent on standardized test height than all of the second graders. Who is in the room when you go to the meeting? When well, his mother went to the meeting, that's not a whole bunch of us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> at, at this particular school, I mean, God give you glory, it was us and another African American single mother. You know what I mean? But a kid that has amazing handwriting and being in second grade. I mean, you CMS did a study. Um, I think they called break, breaking the link, and they were talking about one of their challenges is making sure that all kids, particularly kids of color, know that these accelerated classes are an option for them. And I remember being I was a great student but never felt like I don't know how kids got into AP class I had no idea no. I thought some, some angel yes. had to touch you on the, the head and you got it come with me so yes. I think it's one of those things and making sure that the parents know too. Are active. Exactly. I, I read a sim well I didn't read a similar study but I had read an article at one point that was talking about how gifted and talented children get discovered and put into these programs yes. It is the teachers, and yeah. a lot of times they ignore the black kids, mm -hmm. yeah. and they promote the, the non-brown children Especially into these places. Especially those kids misbehave because of right. the and to, exactly. and to identify that as, as gone through this in the last six months, one, you're either, the kid is either tested in, a guarantee for the life of their education at CMS to be certified gifted, and to be gifted, you're in the top 2%, all right? Or, or you test close enough with these ladies just said about the teachers, and your behavior and other things so that you're mature enough to be walked mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. What a booster club money after that. <laughs> Why are we putting our child's education and in, um, this information in their hands? Why aren't we doing more information and in, 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 uh, investigating ourselves because they have like a Duke's TD program? I wouldn't have known about that if I didn't go and search for it myself with my daughter and put her through it. And home, she's in a private school as well, but I actually homeschool her during the summer so to make sure that she did test into that program. It's a lot about investigating and doing these things for yourself. And to speak, as far as what he was saying, as far as like with the industry and ostracizing these intellectuals, I feel like that is definitely done because then these people, you get into these programs and I went to a PWI and it's like when you get there then it's constantly antagonized by other black people. Yeah. Oh, yep. you're not black That's enough. Very yes. Very you're not true. black enough. And I'm like, I'm here to put us all on. What are you talking about? You know, I, I grew so up I in Europe and when I got back to the States, 
black people wanted nothing to do with me. And I was in middle school, so that was some hard shit. Yes. Black people wanted nothing to do with me because I didn't speak like them. Mm -hmm. And white people didn't want me because I was black. Mm -hmm. That was some hard shit. Mm -hmm. But I'll never forget that, ostr ostr having been ostracized at that age and even into adulthood. Oh, well, you don't, you don't seem black. And it feels, they feel like they're complimenting you, and they're not. So, I am black. So to, to pretty much round all this up, um, it pretty much feels like we just need to take the time and be educated about what and where we're doing it. Meaning we need to be educated about these brands and understand what does this brand mean? Because a lot of times we buy things oh because it was on sale or we buy this because it was available or this looks good. But ultimately to be educated about that brand. Because I had a client come to me one time and said I was, I'm not shopping at Walmart no more. But just turn around and say I'm going to Sam's Club. So, so you have to be conscious of the subsidiary, the subsidiary companies underneath these companies. You think Gucci just do Gucci? No. no. You think you think Louis just do Louis? Like it's a whole breakdown of uh, these people are producing their own knockoffs. Okay. So it, 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 we have to be educated about what it is that we're doing, and even when it transcends over to education, we have to be educated about what our children are doing, where they're doing it at, who's testing our children, what the environment looks like. We have to be so overly educated about it that we're able and armed to to go in and be positive and take over what it is that needs to be taken over. So so that we can make shit happen. Right? Right. So I want to thank you guys for joining me at the table as we discovered a little bit about dressing up. So we know that it's more it's, it's more than just um in a tie. We know it's more than a shirt, it's more than a pair of pants. We have to de definitely arm ourselves with the education behind what we're doing. Um and I want to thank you guys for having that conversation with us because I know it's a tough conversation because we all like to go to the outlets, okay? We all do. Um, but I want to thank you guys for joining us and actually um, being able to sit with us and have this conversation as well. You guys can have that chance by going into our uh, comment boxes and leaving messages, letting us know what you think. Because guys, we all we need to know. You know, we need to wake up and we all need to understand what is it that's gonna that's gonna propel me forward. Okay. So if you guys if you guys got an answer, okay, if you know how to propel me forward, because I I buy a coach. Okay. If you know how to get me out of that, if you know somebody a black designer that can get me out of that, let me know. Okay. I do not mind putting my money back into the community, but. But, you know, just um, like I said, thank you guys for joining us at the table. And as always, uh, follow us on Urban Social TV, uh, Situationship Circle. Thank you guys for joining us. Yes. Yay.